ESPN has a Thursday night game. You'll see the Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Baltimore Ravens at 8.15 Eastern time. And then next Monday, we go to Pittsburgh as the Atlanta Falcons take on the Steelers at Three River Stadium on Monday Night Football next week. Well, after the timeout, the Giants have elected to go for the field goal. Brad Dalwiso will attempt a 27-yard field goal, which would tie the game after an 80-yard drive, and the kick is good. So Jim Fossil figuring the worst thing of all would be to not convert and still be trailing 3 nothing after an 80-yard drive. Remember how good his defense is. He wants to keep his team in the game. 3-3. Three, three. So the Giants go 80 yards, 17 plays before the oh. field goal. So they average less than five yards per play. An amazing drive when you do the math on it. And they wind up with a field goal that ties the game. Now Dalwiso's kick is fielded up at the six-yard line by Kevin Mathis. And he runs into a group at the 23-yard line. 249 of the half. Let's check in with Leslie. Al, he's been one of the most popular players in the history of the Dallas Cowboys. So famous he was known only by a single name, Moose Johnson. Moose, and now his career is threatened by a herniated disc. Moose, 11 years realistically. Is this your last, and how tough a decision would that be? It's going to be a tough decision because football has been a part of my life for 25 years, and it would be a tremendous void to try and fill. But, uh, you know, you talk to the guys that play the game, it gets into your system, and you just never really want to give it up. But there comes a time when everybody has to walk away from that, and I'm going to have a tough decision to make at the end of the season. What about with Michael Irvin? You're both so close. What have you two talked about? The big thing is, is to listen to what the doctors have to say right now. He's going to feel a lot better than he felt last Sunday, but there's still going to be some problems with the neck. And, and what you go through is all of a sudden you start to feel like you can do certain things, but you have to be very attentive to what the doctors say and, and listen to their schedule. Well, you know, Alan Boomer, some things about Michael don't change. Moose offered Michael his neck brace, and uh, Michael told him it doesn't match my outfit. <laughs> Back to you guys. All right, thank probably, you, It's probably too big, big for Michael's neck anyway. <laughs> He's got a fullback neck as opposed to a wide receiver. But, you know, Al, what that indicates to me, the Giants kicking the field goal, is that he he recognizes Fossil does that his offense is not really to have a lot of confidence. And he has to build it up little by little. And they could talk about how great that drive was and that they came away with points. Second down and a long one from the 31 yard line as it throws. That is batted up in the air and nearly picked off. Barnes almost had his second interception. And Jason Seahorn was the guy who batted it on the pass intended for Ernie Mills. As we come to the two-minute warning, that much time left in the first half of the Meadowlands. The Cowboys and Giants tied 3-3. Aerial camera provided tonight by Southwest Airlines. The Dallas Cowboys and the New York Giants tied at the two-minute warning of the first half, 3-3. Third and a long one for the Cowboys from the 30-yard line. And it's Emmett Smith seeking the first down, putting his head down, and it's going to be very, very close. The Giants say no, the Cowboys say yes. In fact, the Giants are so confident they have stopped him, they're asking for a timeout. Well, they didn't make it, not even close. Nope, not there. That's Robert Harris who stops him. Timeout, New York. Their second timeout. This is a 30-second timeout. Would you please return the game clock to read? One minute and 51 seconds. Two more seconds on the clock. One timeout now for the New York Giants. Who Boomer now will attempt to move the ball down the field with alacrity after <laughs> moving 80 yards. I mean, it's one of those amazing drives. 17 plays, 80 yards, less than five yards per play. But Graham was near perfect. Tiki Barber did a nice job running the ball. Gary Brown only carried once, and at least they came away with three points. Well, what I like here is they're aggressive at least. They and, and how much more can their defense do for you? Uh, the offenses now has to respond, and they have to continue building on what they just did prior to this last series. So uh, this is a great move by Jim Fossil, calling timeout and playing aggressive football. He has to. His defense has kept him in the game. Now we'll see what the offense can do. As Toby Goen kicks, Tiki Barber is back to receive the kick at the 30-yard line. The Giants set up a return. It's an end-over-end going kick. Barber at the 30-yard line. And comes back out to the 39, and a flag comes in at the end. Tackled by Izell Reese. Mm.
During the return, illegal block in the back, number 86, 10 yard penalty, first down. Giants and Cowboys, part of Monday Night History since 1971. Mark, looking deep for Bob Hayes. That's one reason why you want to put up in the air every now and then. <laughs> Giants and Cowboys, October 11th, 1971. Craig Morton now living in Scottsdale, Arizona. And Bob Hayes uh, residing in Jacksonville. Running a local business. First down for the Giants at the 25-yard line. With one timeout, they give it to Barber and Tiki. Picks up close to 10 as he's tackled at the 35-yard line. A lot of times you'll start out with a draw play, which that was, and simulate a pass just to see if you can get some yards and get away from your own end zone. But now you can start calling plays, kind of freewheeling a little bit, and it all falls on Kent Graham now. He's running the offense as we see it right now. Giants going without Brown, and a quarterback sneak. Graham tries to pick up the first down, and also without Charles Way, who sprained his knee in the first quarter, and he has not been back in the game. A minute to go. It is a first down, first and 10, up at the 36-yard line. Graham out of the shotgun. Cowboys coming on the blitz. Graham going deep, and only a cowboy is there. It was Kevin Smith with Amani Toomer, the intended receiver. And there's a flag down again with 46 ticks remaining. Now, now I think if you're the offense, you're going to get backed up, and you've got to be careful here. I'm going to take a 10-yard penalty for holding. Huh. Holding offense number 21 10 yard penalty repeat the down first down that is already the seventh penalty oh. against the Giants in the first half and it's cost them a total of 65 yards you'll see a draw a screen right here something that will be safe so back to the 26 they go <laughs> and on first and 20 the screen Barber, well, except there's no blocking on that screen. Dexter Copley's the only guy there. That screen had holes in it, Al. It had a lot of that. Yes, it did. And the mosquitoes <laughs> came flying through. And mosquitoes in New York are not a thing to be talking about. Yeah, that's exactly right. Second down and 20 at the 26-yard line. And the Giants looking as if they'll just be content to go in time. going over the middle, and that is deflected and nearly picked off in and out of the hands of David Patton with 12 seconds remaining and Izell Reese who already has two interceptions this season nearly at a third you no know, not an easy catch for David Patton by any means but certainly a catch that he can make and should make and these are the types of plays that offenses have to make somebody has to show up and make a play and Patton had the opportunity and just didn't do it so we had a halftime report Chris Berman's top 10 and also Michael Irvin will be here We'll speak with him live and get the update. And the official gets right into the middle of the action as Barber is taken down up at the 29-yard line. And the Cowboys, the Cowboys will take a timeout. We can tell you that Monday Night Football is being brought to you by Ford Outfitters, no boundaries. Miller Lite, taste a true Pilsner. And CNET, the source for computers and technology at CNET.com. Now we have a, a very interesting situation here because you've got Gailey taking the timeout. Go back to the Monday night game, Atlanta against Dallas. If for some reason this is a fluttering kick that can be fair caught by the Cowboys, even if the clock has three zeros on, on, at the at the end of the play, the Cowboys would still have a free opportunity for a field goal. So with a swirling wind and Maynard trying to kick it away from Sanders. <laughs> It's a great move by Gailey, figuring he either has to kick it to Dion, or perhaps Dion can fair catch it. Or if it goes out of bounds, maybe they'll still have a second left in the half. Let's see what happens. Or they try to block it. They're going to set up the return, and it's a bouncing, wobbly kick, and Dion just has to let it go. So actually, that's about as perfect a kick as Maynard can make under those circumstances as the clock runs out in the first half. 
Interesting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> About as interesting as three and three can be, I guess. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> well, I don't know. I can think of a few other adjectives, but we'll take that one. 3-3 three, three at the half. Coming up on the Toyota Halftime Show, we'll talk with Michael Irvin as we come back after this message from the NFL and a word from our EBC stations.